before I begin this year, I want to say that in commemoration of my Rebbe, my Rabbi, Haravar Lichtenstein's birthday, I wish to dedicate our Torah learning uh, here to Aliyat uh, Nishmato. The topic of our shir is enhancing the Shabbos meal, an age of material. Uh, we generally are privileged to having food at our meals during the week, uh, but this may pose a challenge to establishing our Shabbos meals as unique and special events when they might not look at all that different quantitatively wise or maybe even qualitatively wise from weekday meals. She will look into this problem and see how Halacha deals with this issue and how also Rav Luchensin Zatzal personally dealt with this issue. Um, so I just first want to begin with some of the halachic background about the nature of the, uh, the Shabbos meal. Uh, is it just a din in, in Oneg Shabbos, Kavod Shabbos? And uh, this will help us and try to, you know, to focus in on the particulars of how to solve the problem and the, what is the problem itself. Every week, uh, Jewish households around the world, and I think we all see this, are enveloped in a flurry of activity preparing for the upcoming Shabbos. Uh, we are concerned with many details to make sure the job is as pleasant and enjoyable and distinguished as possible. Uh, and this is in fulfillment of the command to honor Shabbos and to delight in Shabbos, of covered and onik Shabbos. And this is what the Navi says in Yeshaya and Perak Nun Ches. The Karas of the Shabbos Oneg, Lektosh Hashem Mechubad. They call the Shabbos a delight, Hashem's holy day honored. Now, there is some debate whether this din in Yeshaya uh, of Kovar Vioneg is a, uh, is a Torah or a rabbinic command. But either way, the mitzvah requires very careful and devoted and, uh, and dedicated performance. Yet the question is, why do we seemingly place a greater emphasis, perhaps beyond that of other mitzvahs, on the amount of time and care and effort to into the fulfillment of the mitzvah? Um, obviously preparing for Pesach, we do a lot more. But generally speaking, uh, preparing for Shabbos is a very, very big part of uh, uh, the amount of time that we put into, into mitzvahs. So why is there so much devotion uh, to this, uh, this uh, mitzvah? So there are a number of notable uh, halachic answers to this question. Uh, one solution, for example, is that we are told in, uh, in the Torah, in Vayikra, Perak Chavav, Es Shabso Sai Tishmoru Mikdashi Tiro. Uh, keep my uh, keep my Shabbatot and fear my uh, Mikdash. Uh, and Rav Lozer Mimetz, the Yireim, comments on this Pasuk. And he says, this is in Simon Tafiud in the Yireim. He says that, this is a quote, okay, I'm, I'm, I translated it. So the, the quote is as follows. Just as God commands us to fear and honor the Mikdash, to have uh, Yira and Kvod HaMikdash, so too Hashem commands us to fear and honor the Shabbos, okay? because the juxtaposed in the Pasuk. So the Uraim says, what does it mean to fear Shabbos? What does it mean? So the Uraim says that a person should keep in mind to honor Shabbos and to ensure and be zealous in the matter. So basically, to the, Uraim, the reason why we put so much time and effort in is that this is what the mitzvah of Kavod and you know, Kavod Shabbos is. It's like the mikdash. You have to have uh, honor and uh, fear. Uh, so because of that, we're motivated, obviously, to take care to honor the Shabbos. Uh, another important halachic source, the level of attention that needs to be given to the mitzvah of Kavod Bionic Shabbos is derived from the Pasuk in Shmos, uh, in Perak Lamar Aleph. V'shamru v'nei Yisrael es ha-shabbat la'asot et ha-shabbat. And v'nei Yisrael kept or uh, watch the Shabbos, make the Shabbos. So uh, what, what's, what does it mean? You, they kept the Shabbos, or watched the Shabbos, to make the Shabbos. So Rav Chaim ben Atar in his Or Chaim, he, uh, he comments that this means we should anticipate when Shabbos meal, when Shabbos will arrive, so that we can arrange all our needs for Shabbos to have a festive meal. That's the... In other words, that we're watching, we're trying to see when Shabbos will occur, or specifically have this uh, festive meal. That's the, uh, the idea. So, uh, so that's a specific mitzvah. V'shomru lasos is a Shabbos. What Hashem is, is saying to us. Now, moreover, 
uh, according to the Gemara in Beitza, in Daf Tes Zayin Amar Aleph, Shammai understood the Pasuk in, uh, in Shmos Tuf of Zohar Es Yom HaShabbos Lakacho, which means to remember the Shabbos to keep it holy, to mean one should start putting aside food for Shabbos even at the beginning of the week. And basically his cycle of eating was always geared uh, towards the honor of Shabbos. For if he would come, let's say, into the possession of a good animal. So he would set it aside for the, uh, for the Shabbos meal. But after doing so, if later he would find uh, an even better animal, so he would eat the first animal, set it aside, and set aside the second animal, this new animal, for the Shabbos meal. Now, by contrast, Hillel behaved differently. Uh, because of his deep emuna in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, uh, he would be furnished, and, and he believed with all his might, that he would be furnished with a festive meal, Shabbos, even if he would decide the animal at the beginning of the week. So he would eat, uh, you know, he would eat right away if he came across a good animal. He believed that he, that down the course of the week, Hashem would provide him with something good for Shabbos. But nonetheless, Hillel agreed that most who were not on his level of emuna in Hashem, they should act in accordance with, uh, with Shammai, and they should put aside food for Shabbos. Uh, and that, again, is what Zohar Yom HaShabbos Kancho means. So basically, Shammai put aside food right away for Shabbos, and Hillel felt that everyone should do that as well, except for people who had a very, very high uh, madrega. So, um, so that's another reason why so much effort is placed into Shabbos based on Zohar Es Yom HaShabbos Lekacho. But as well, we can deduce uh, these exacting preparations uh, for Shabbos uh, logically. Uh, we're all familiar, familiar with the analogy uh, of Hashem to the leader of a great nation. Now, if such a great leader, a great leader, uh, were to come visit our home, uh, our preparations would be endless. Our house would be shining, uh, our food would be delicious, our clothing spotless, and we would certainly not finish our preparations late. Uh, so how much more so should we be careful to honor Hashem uh, and the Shabbos? So, uh, so that's just misvara, that's, that's the logic. If you go from, if you think about what we do for a great leader, so Kavl Chomer, we would do so for the Rabbonu Shalom. Now finally, on a, uh, on a metaphysical level, we are sharply aware of Hashem's desire, uh, so to speak, uh, in the fulfillment of this mitzvah of Kavod and Onik Shabbos. And we're also fully aware, uh, if you're familiar with some of the Gemaras, and I'll, I'll give you some of the background, uh, we're, f we're familiar with the immense reward that Hashem throws upon those who fulfill Kavod and Onik Shabbos. For example, the Rambam in uh, in Shabbos, in Parkalamid, uh, says, V'chol ha-shomer as ha-shabbos kehil chasal mechab ma'angal kehil Whoever keeps the Shabbos and uh, properly and honors it and fights in it according to his uh, abilities, k'var mefurosh b'kabola, uh, so meaning, it's already expl explained in the Navi, in Yeshaya, Perak uh, Nunches, so he gets reward in this world over and above the reward that, that is laid up for him in the world to come. So he gets more reward. You know, it's besides the award that he will get uh, in, uh, in Olam Haba, beyond that, it, we even get in this world as well. It's a big thing. Um, he calls the Pesach in, uh, in Yishai and Ches. And I'm just going to translate it. Then shall you delight yourself in Hashem. I will make you ride upon the high places of the earth. And I will feed you with the heritage of Yaakov, uh, your father of the mouth of Hashem has spoken. Uh, and, uh, and basically, uh, this, is, this is a, a tremendous suchus and a tremendous schar that, he, that the Navi Yeshaya is explaining for us and what the Rambam is referring to. Uh, just one more thing. If you look in the Gemara in Shabbos, in Daf Kuf Yud Chesam and Aleph, in Kuf Yud Chesam and Beis, there are many references in this regard. For example, uh, the Gemara talks about how one is spared from the travails of the era of Mashiach, uh, from the judgment of Gehenna, uh, from, the, from the war of, uh, of Gog Magog. Uh, so it says in the Gemara that 
uh, one, that one is granted a boundless heritage uh, and is spared from oppression in, in Golos, and that basically one gets, uh, you know, all of one's heart's desires are granted. So basically we see that there is tremendous schar uh, for uh, preparing uh, for Shabbos, for covered and onik Shabbos. So for all of the above reasons, a uh, great uh, and extra emphasis is placed upon the fulfillment of the mitzvah corner and the light in Shabbos, of course, based on all these reasons that we mentioned. Uh, yet with this in mind, it is important to remember something. <clears throat> it is important to remember that true honor, true covered of Shabbos is bestowed for fulfilled only when it is conferred intentionally and in a recognizable fashion. It has to be intentional and in a nikar, in a recognizable way. As a result, uh, there are a number of things that we have to pay attention to when fulfilling this mitzvah. Uh, and I'm going to elaborate just a little bit about why it has to be intentional and recognizable, but just in terms of svara, you can't call something giving honor if it's unintentional. Honor, by definition, is that you did it intentionally. You can't say you honored somebody or something, but if it was unintentional. Uh, and moreover, also, if it's not really recognizable, it's not honoring. So, just swear it has to be so. Uh, so, there are a number of things we have to pay attention to when fulfilling the mitzvah of Kavod and on Shabbos. For example, according to Chazal, um, one should personally and actively be involved in some of the Shabbos preparations, no matter how great a stature you know, a person is. Uh, even if a person has great stature, uh, he, he personally is supposed to be involved in actions for the, for the Shabbos. The Rambam talks about it, it's based on the Gemara. In addition, uh, it is proper to purchase and prepare food for Shabbos, specifically on Erev Shabbos, if you can, when it's possible, in order to show that the food was bought and prepared specifically in Shabbos' honor. By having that samud, having it close to Shabbos, you're showing that this is for Shabbos. If you buy it in the beginning of the week, then is it really clear that it's for Shabbos? Maybe not. Uh, maybe if you do buy it in the beginning of the week, at least declare that this is for Shabbos. Uh, and this is, this is mentioned in the Mishnah Bura, in the, uh, in the Shulchan Aruch, uh, to do these things. Um, maybe we're not so used to doing them. They verbalize and say, this is for Shabbos something that's very meaningful uh, in terms of the fulfillment of the mitzvah, and it's meaningful on a personal level. Uh, I think it means a lot to a person when they finally do this, they internalize what they're doing, that, of the great significance of what they're doing, the honor that they're bringing to, to our Kaddish Baruch Hu in honoring his Shabbos. Um, so, so as I said, there are a number of things a person should try to do, uh, do personally, try to close the Shabbos as possible, uh, and, uh, and, and try to say that this is the Chavod uh, L'chavod Shabbos. Now, the idea that true honor is bestowed only when it is heard uh, intentionally and in a recognizable fashion is addressed explicitly. It's not just a svara, but it's, it's addressed explicitly in a, uh, subsequent, a subsequent Gemara in Shabbos and Daf Kuf Yutes uh, Amr uh, The Gemara teaches uh, that in part of Shabbos means to behave differently on Shabbos than during the week. As the Pesach itself states, as the Pesach it says uh, in, 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 in the Yishaya, and you should honor it not by engaging in your customary ways. Don't behave in the normal way, make it in, in, in an unusual way. As a result, basically you're suggesting that people need to do something Intentional, 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 and recognizable. So the Torah says, people commonly have meat and wine uh, every day. Uh, and they do so even on Shabbos. So that's having meat and wine throughout the week and on Shabbos. So then their uh, their kavod Shabbos has been compromised. This isn't something that you can look at as being recognizable. That's not called the chibato miasos drachecha. You're not doing something different than your customary ways. So the Gemara says, well, if you want to have the same amount of meat and wine on Shabbos as you do during the week, 
So how can you fulfill the pasuk of the Tomi Asos doing something different than you do during the week? So the Gemara says, very, very simple answer. Change the time of your Shabbos meal. That's all you need to do. Change the time of your Shabbos meal uh, and then from the normal time of the week. So if you normally have your, your weekday meal uh, you know, early, so have the Shabbos meal later and, uh, or vice versa. But just change the time. That's all it takes, uh, says the Gemara. Just change the time of the Shabbos meal from that of the weekday meal, and that will make the Shabbos experience uh, unique. Now, such deliberate behavior uh, it transforms an otherwise regular meal into oneg that is recognizably in honor of Shabbos. That's the point. So what we're really focusing on over here is how to, utilize, how to take oneg and utilize it to, to fulfill uh, of Od Shabbos, the chibato, uh, to, to create this oneg. So oneg is, a, is in a certain sense, a, a tool or a vehicle to honor to the Shabbos. And you do so by doing it in, an, in a different way than you do then during the, uh, the normal week. Now, the, the Gemara, interestingly, does not suggest some obvious uh, alternative solutions. Uh, what, have been, what would have been an, a, uh, an obvious alternative solution? Um, let's say, for example, why not have more meat and more wine on Shabbos than you do during the week? Maybe do that. The Gemara doesn't suggest that. Or why don't you have qualitatively at a new course? Don't have more meat and wine, but now have meat and wine and salad. Okay. Um, so if you have an added course, that would seemingly be you're doing something different. But the Gemara doesn't mention that. Not, I don't think the Gemara is saying it doesn't work. The Gemara is just simply saying that you don't need to do that. It's enough to change the time. And that's really remarkable. Uh, another possible solution uh, could be uh, to simply change uh, the, uh, you know, on Shabbos, the type of meat and the type of wine that you usually would have during the week. For example, uh, you could have uh, boiled meat and sweet wine during the, week, during the week and then have roasted meat and dry wine on Shabbos. And the, uh, the Gemara doesn't mention any of that. Uh, the Gemara just seems to think that it's sufficient to change the times of your meals, and that would be considered v'chibato uh, me'asos And uh, as I said, this is quite remarkable, but it doesn't mean that one can't fulfill v'chibato me'asos drachecha in these other ways. Maybe these are even better ways, but the Gemara doesn't demand that. Um, indeed, uh, the Rambam, lahalacha, uh, paskins in Hilchah Shabbat, in Parakamad, Halacha uh, Ches, he says that really any of the solutions that you want to change from the weekday meal to the Shabbos meal are, are okay. This is what he this is what he writes. He says Misha Haya Onug Vaashir Vahare Kol Yomov Kishabis. If a person was reared in luxury and wealth, uh, so that basically all his days are like Shabbos, so he should make his Shabbos food different from his weekday food, or make his Shabbos eating different from his weekday eating. Uh, so the, uh, he says, like, Now, what's interesting from this Rambam is that while the Rambam recognizes that changing the times is sufficient, his first choice is to try to have different foods. That, the, that's the Rambam's Chiddush. Try to have different foods. But if you can't, he says, if it's impossible to do so, so then change the times. But uh, preferably, says the Rambam, uh, you should have some different foods uh, during the week and, and, and different foods on Shabbos, or maybe more courses. He doesn't go into it, but it's, he says that you should be Mishan of Michael of Shabbos, um, as I said, the Rambam seems to understand any modification, even in the time 
uh, of, uh, of changing, you know, changing the times of the meals is uh, efficient. Now, I, uh, I just want to focus in on, a, uh, on another Gemara um, that just sort of underscores uh, this, uh, this idea of intentionally um, doing something, and that is the method of giving honor to Shabbos. So uh, just if I can mention one more Gemara, uh, if you look in the Gemara in Shabbos, Kuf Yid Ches Beis, the Gemara has a revealing discussion uh, based on the interconnected, interconnectedness between Oneg and Kavod Shabbos. Um, for example, the Gemara says in Kofi Ches Beis the following. I'm going I'm to translate it. The Gemara says, with what foods should one delight in the Shabbos? And what foods do you have Oneg Shabbos? So the Gemara gives a suggestion. You should have a dish of cooked beets, large fish, and cloves of, uh, cloves of garlic. Uh, now, I don't imagine most people are doing this. Maybe some people are. But uh, that's what the Gemara suggests. Now, here's the question. Does the Gemara mean that that's the only way to fulfill the mitzvah of, uh, of uh, Oneg Shabbos? You have to have large fish and cloves of garlic uh, on, on Shabbos. So the Levush uh, says as follows. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Levush is in Orchaim Simen Reish Mem Beis. He says that, no, that's not the case. But rather, the, uh, the, the particular food items that are mentioned are well, highly regarded in the times of the Gemara. He would serve well in honoring and in delighting in the Shabbos. And this is very important. The Levush uses this. The, if you understand the interpretation of the Levush of this Gemara, the Levush is saying that the, the reason why the Gemara mentioned those food items, the cooked beets, large fish, and, the gar- and, cloves, and cloves of garlic, because that's how you bring honor to Shabbos. Uh, because it's, it, was a, it was a special delight, and using a special delight is something that honors the Shabbos. And that was something that was highly regarded in those times, the large uh, fish and cloves of garlic. And therefore, that, that, that delight, that special delight, would bring honor to Shabbos. And that's the important point, that it brings honor because it's special. It's recognizable. Um, and therefore, says Lavash, one should lechabed et the Shabbat ula aneg bok minog inugia anshem kumo. Since you want to honor to the Shabbat, you have to know what is considered a delight in your times. So find the delights of your times that are really special and really unique and highly regarded, and use them on Shabbos, and that will be on Shabbos. That will be honoring the Shabbos. Now, the Mishnah Bura uh, in Simon Reish Membeis cites this sack of the Lavush, Lahalacha, and argues that this indeed is what motivated Shulchan Aruch ultimately in Simon Reish Nun uh, to write the following to write, Yirbe bebosar v'yayin umigdanot, kifi yichoto. A person should have more meat and wine and treats to the best of his ability. Um, and here, if you notice, the Shulchan Aruch doesn't mention loaves of garlic uh, or beets. Uh, that's not, uh, you know, or even, or even fish, necessarily. He mentions something, the point is it has to be specifically these items. But the point is, is that it's something that is considered highly regarded by, by people uh, and be recognizable and will bring honor to Shabbos. Uh, and again, this is, I think, it's only the view of the Rambam in Hilcha Shabbat Shaklamid. Ezehu Oneg, Zesha'am Lechachamim, Shitzarach Latakin, Tavshil Shamein Bioter, Umash Kavusam the Shabbos. What is Oneg? You should prepare for Shabbos the richest food and scented drinks. In other words, good for things that people do is highly regarded. The Rambam even refrains from telling us what specifically these foods are. Um, but uh, again, the point that I wanted to bring out is that the Levush's understanding of the Gemara is that by doing this, by taking something that's highly regarded uh, and, and, and is great delight, that brings honor to Shabbos. It's recognizable for, for Shabbos. It's intentional for Shabbos. Now, it's also true, uh, the reverse. Uh, not just something that is recognizable for Shabbos, but I, as I mentioned, the intentional part. Uh, let's say, for example, 
you don't have that much. A person doesn't have that much to, to at all. So, um, so the, the Gemara later on in Kofi Chesim Abbas, that you can fulfill, the, you can utilize Onik Shabbos and fulfill it even with a small basic food, provided it is done in honor of Shabbos, says the Gemara. So here, even though uh, maybe objectively, the small basic food that you're eating on Shabbos is not considered highly regarded. But since you are doing it subjectively, l'chvod Shabbos, that, in honor of Shabbos, then that is bringing honor to Shabbos. So again, I, I just, I'm using this, these Gemaras and Kufi Chesam Abeis to underscore how important it is to intentionally and in an unrecognizable fashion uh, bring honor to Shabbos through the medium of Oneg Shabbos. That's, that's the point that we're talking about over here. So the Shabbos meal, which is Oneg Shabbos, is being utilized to bring Kavo Shabbos. As I mentioned, when a person eats well during the week, and therefore on Shabbos, he's trying to figure out how to make it recognizable, uh, his Shabbos meal is really the Chavot Shabbat, and it's not different, and it has to be different than his weekday meal. So the Rambam prefers that a person change his, his Shabbos meal uh, in terms of uh, quantity or quality, but in terms of the food itself, he should change. But if he can't, if it's impossible, uh, then it's enough to change this, just the timing. Uh, so that, in a certain sense, while there's a chumrah in the Rambam, he's also sort of meekful, that merely just changing the time is enough uh, showing that this time is different. Shabbos is different, and therefore this meal, since it's, it's at a different time uh, than normal, it is the Chavod Shabbos. But it's a kula. It is a leniency. The Zohar, though, uh, might be more stringent. The Zohar uh, seems to be more machmer because he asserts that uh, one should have at least two cooked foods for the Shabbos meal. That's, he, he tells us how many cooked foods you should have. You should have at least two cooked foods, but it doesn't say why. So the Kafa Chaim in, uh, in Arachayim, in Simon Tuf, excuse me, in Simon Reish Mem Beis, believes that this Zohar that says you should have two cooked food on Shabbos is saying that in order to distinguish the Shabbos meal from the weekday meal, because the weekday meal typically has only one cooked food. Now, the Kafa Chaim is saying the Zohar said what he said in a time period when people would eat only one cooked food for their weekday meal. So the Zohar was saying, therefore, you should quantitatively, and maybe even more so, qualitatively, the truth is, because it's not just more food, it's not more food, but it's another course. Uh, you should have another course on Shabbos, one more course than you do uh, than, during the week. And therefore, says the Kafa Chaim, if it happens to be that a person's weekday meal uh, usually has two cooked foods, then on Shabbos, that person should have three cooked foods, uh, and so on. If you happen to have five cooked foods in your weekday meal, then you should have six on Shabbos. The Kafa Chaim uh, says that's what's important, according to the Zohar. So according to the Zohar, the Zohar is much more insistent on the, on the method of the change. It's not enough just to have different times or or more food, but even it's another course of food is important. So that's, that's a new idea here, that the Zohar is insisting on an additional course. Now, this idea of adding a course to the Shabbos menu to fulfill Kavod Shabbos, because it's recognizable uh, and it's intentional um, for Shabbos. So that idea may in fact, that idea of the Zohar, I mean, in fact, implied, possibly, possibly, by the Shulchan Aruch himself. Chaim, Simen Reish Nun Sif Beis. Because uh, the Shulchan Aruch said, Yir be bebosar v'yayin migdanot kifi yukhalto. Uh, your person should have more meat, wine, and treats to the best of his ability. Now, what's more mean? Uh, when the Shulchan Aruch says more, it's not so clear. Uh, does he mean merely that you should have an abundance of food and drink on Shabbos? <clears throat> Even if such a meal would be similar to a regular week's meal, just a lot more than me, that one should enjoy more food and drink on Shabbos meal, Shabbos meal than one normally would, 
uh, during the weekday meal. And if it's true that it's more food and drink, then is it just more port? Is it more food or more portions? It's more. You know, is, is, is it just a larger portion, or does it mean qualitatively more food courses should be added to the Shabbos meal? Um, so it's not clear, but it's possible that that's the intent of the Shulchan Aruch as well to add another course. Uh, you, another one way to analyze this and inspect this is to take a look at a parallel talk Shulchan Aruch with regard to Rosh Chodesh. Um, the, the Shulchan Aruch writes, this is in Simen Af Yud S. Uh, he, the Shulchan Aruch writes ambiguously, Mitzvah laharbot besudat Rosh Chodesh. It's a mitzvah to have more with regard to the Rosh Chodesh meal. That's what he says. It's a mitzvah to have more with regard to the Rosh Chodesh meal. Then, when the Shulchan Aruch says to have more at the, at the Rosh Chodesh meal, what does that mean? <clears throat> uh, does it mean just to have larger, larger portions or more courses? So the Mishnah Bura over there in Simon Tuf Yud Tess, uh, Sif Katan Bay, Bays, seems to understand that more is generally understood to mean uh, basically greater portions, larger portions on Rosh Chodesh than on normal days. Um, so it's, th- that's, that's what it would mean, just n- not an added course, but rather just more food. But the Mishnah Bura notes as follows, and this is really important. The Mishnah Bura says, while it's true that on Rosh Chodesh having m- a larger portion is sufficient, he says, Katvu achronim, the Hamadaktikim, the Yachronim writes, the later authorities write, that those who are careful in mitzvot, Noagim um, Kishachal Rosh Chodesh Bechol, they're careful that in honor of Rosh Chodesh, that when, if the Rosh Chodesh falls out uh, on a weekday, um, so we're going to have it, we're going to actually have Rosh Chodesh, uh, which is tonight already and, uh, and uh, tomorrow. But we're also going to have it on Shabbos, okay, which the Mishnah Bura is going to relate to in a minute, uh, which is the, the, the yard site uh, of Rav Lachin Sin Zatzal. <clears throat> so the Mishnah Bura says that the later authorities, the Achronim, say that the Medaktikim, those who are careful mitzvot, say that in honor of Rosh Chodesh, when it falls out on the weekday, so you should have one more course of food than you typically do on a regular day. So, Osim Ma'achal Echad Yoter Mikol Hayamim Lechvod Rosh Chodesh. Um, and when Rosh Chodesh falls out on Shabbat, and if Rosh Chodesh falls on Shabbos, so then you should have even more. Whatever, just like on Shabbos, you're having more than during the week, so you should have more on Rosh Chodesh that falls on Shabbos because you want to, because it's Rosh Chodesh. So this is the way to make it recognizable in honor of Rosh Chodesh. Now, implicitly here, I'm very remarkable. The Mishnah Bura is basically implying that the Medaktikim, people who are careful in mitzvot, should have one more course. They do, this is their minog, that they would have one more course at a regular Shabbos meal than they do at a weekday meal. And on Rosh Chodesh, the fellows that on Shabbos, they have an even additional course. According uh, to the Mishnah Bura, he is telling us in Masora that it is known that people who are careful in this halacha of the chibatome asot rechacha and kavod Shabbos, you want to make proper kavod, it's not enough just to change the time of your meal. And it's not enough just to have more food or different, uh, different food. But it's also important to have an additional course on Shabbos than during the week. And indeed, uh, the Chassam Sofer is recorded to have designated a, a particular food, uh, a of food, in his case it was fish, uh, only on Shabbos or Yom Tov Rosh Chodesh. In other words, when, uh, when it was Shabbos, you know, he would have fish. Weekday, he would not. He wouldn't have fish. Uh, if it was Yom Tov, he would have fish, or Rosh Chodesh he would, uh, that fell on a weekday, so he, had, uh, he would have fish. But he used that course of fish 
as his special way of adding a, something special to, uh, to Shabbos or Yom Tov or Rosh Chodesh in order to make them uh, recognizable uh, uh, Shabbos or Yom Tov or, uh, or Rosh Chodesh. Now, we, Baruch Hashem, uh, live in an age of, uh, of plenty, you know, more or less, you know, most of us, are, you know, are not eating just uh, you know, bread and salt, um, you know, and water on a daily basis. Um, you know, we, we more or less have, you know, good food <clears throat> on the whole. And, uh, and while that's a bl- it's an incredible blessing, uh, but because of this, we have a, uh, a challenge. It's not so simple any longer to bestow a recognizable honor on Shabbos through our Shabbos meals. Um, you know, people would sometimes just subsist on very little during the week and uh, put away money for, for the Shabbos purchases and have something extravagant and extraordinary uh, on Shabbos. But uh, if people are eating well during the week, then how, how do they do that? How do they make the Shabbos meal special? Uh, and unique and recognizable and, and, and more meaningful and, and clearly in honor of Shabbos. Uh, and moreover, like Shabbos often have the same number of food courses, it's not the quality of food, but also the same food courses. It's a comprehensive meal that we'd have on Shabbos. Very often we'd have uh, on, on during the weekday. Uh, it obviously depends on people, but it's, uh, it's not so unusual. Um, still is possible as as you know, as I think many assume, you know, that uh, you can make Shabbos meals, you know, unique uh, by changing the type of food that you have on Shabbos. For example, let's take a case. Uh, let's say someone might have soup during the weekday. Maybe they have vegetable soup during the weekday. But very often people are known, you know, to have chicken soup, chicken soup for Shabbos. I'm not saying everyone there, there some people have other soups. But as an example, it's a classic Shabbos uh, dish. So even though you're not having an additional course, but it's a very unique course for Shabbos. Everyone, you think of chicken soup, you think of Shabbos. Uh, or, uh, you know, you think of chalant, you think of Shabbos. Um, even if you wouldn't necessarily have an additional course, but there are certain meals that are very special for Shabbos. Um, so maybe that's enough, and it should be enough. And I think people typically assume that. But, uh, it is still this matter of interpreting the Shulchan Aruch's idea of having more uh, for, with regard to the Shabbos menu. If it's true that more means not just the uh, amount of food, but the amount of courses, as the, as the Mishnah Bureau notes, the Medoktikim would do, then that would support the, the notion of having an additional course at the Shabbos meal beyond the additional course uh, that we have on, on a normal week, but beyond the regular courses that we have on a normal weekday, we'd have to have an additional course uh, on Shabbos. Now, in light of this whole discussion, in light of the above, uh, Rav Luchensin Zatzal, uh, consistent with his uh, life of self-restraint uh, and devotion uh, to making mitzvot as, as l'chatchila uh, and as mahudar, he would intentionally refrain uh, from eating soup at the weekday meal. Um, we, we, in yeshiva, we noticed that during lunchtime, uh, during the week, he wouldn't have soup. And uh, when we asked him why, he quoted this, uh, the sugya. He talked about the sugya. And uh, he said that he wanted to make sure that he would have a, um, uh, an additional course, a special course uh, for the Shabbos meal. Uh, and uh, this would bring extra kavod for the Shabbos. Uh, and this way he would make the soup course on Shabbos very significant. It would be a, it would be a singular treat for him uh, because he never would have soup during uh, the week. Again, I don't know if never, but, but that was typical for him. We didn't notice him, and that's what he said. He, he, wouldn't, he would refrain from the soup in order that soup would be a singular treat for him uh, that would serve as a recognizable addition in honor of the, uh, of the Shabbos meal. Uh, indeed, the, uh, the very act, it's interesting here, the act of refraining from eating soup. It's not a, 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 a kumviase, it's not a, a, a positive action, but here it's a shevi altase, it's a refraining. That refraining 
um, from soup or whatever course of meal a person would refrain from, uh, let's say, you know, during the, during the course of the week, during the week, whatever one would choose to refrain from during the week, uh, that act of refraining in some sense also is, if it's geared recognizably so towards honoring Shabbos, then that itself also would seem to be a fulfillment of Kavod Shabbos. So both, it would be two levels of fulfillment of the Kavod of, Kavod of Shabbos. During the week, by refraining from food for Shabbos, the Kavod Shabbos, here the refraining during the week is an act of honoring Shabbos. Uh, and then on Shabbos, when one would have, let's say, that soup course that normally don't have, that would be a singular treat, that would be another act another level of uh, Shabbos. So, um, so essentially what's going on over here is the opportunity that Rav Lichtenstein exercised uh, during, the, during the week, that by refraining from the, the soup course, I, you know, on two levels, he was Mechavit Shabbos. He was Mechavit Shabbos during the week through refraining and on Shabbos by having that, uh, that soup course. Uh, and uh, I, I hope that the learning of this sugya and mentioning this, uh, this type of uh, zrizut by Rav Luchensin Zatzal um, would, uh, would help L'aliyad Nishmato, brings chus to his neshama uh, by, uh, by just the learning itself and the mentioning itself, and also by inspiring us uh, to reach even higher in our personal lives, uh, to, do, to do more, and sometimes we could see that doing more uh, could be in the kumbiase, in the positive, in the performance, and also can be accomplished uh, as well by the shevi altasa sometimes, by, by refraining and by holding back. Uh, that too can be an act of, uh, of aspiring for, for greater things uh, and giving honor to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and to Shabbos uh, and to, to other aspects of, uh, of Kedusha. Um, at, at this point, uh, if I can, I, you know, if anyone has any questions, I'd be more than happy to, uh, to discuss them just for, just for a few minutes. Mm. So if there are no questions, then I, I just want to say, uh, what a uh, what a joy and what a treat it's been to learn with uh, with all of you, and uh, I uh, I hope we all uh, are, maintain our health and we we hear good news uh, and uh, we experience besar to vote for ourselves and for our families and for Klai Yisrael and for the world all over, uh, and uh, just wishing you all a uh, a chodesh tov and uh, and a uh, shabbat shalom. Can I say uh, And uh, all the best. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, so I, I just wanted to say that um, you're saying, you know, to add the foods and to make it more covetic for Shabbos, I've always felt like you're, you're confirming um, how I have felt really all the, all the years eating on Shabbat, how special the food is. And I, I do make more than I normally would. And I do make different foods than I normally would. And um, the food just tastes different. And the... Uh, the um, the atmosphere of giving it, it I don't know if it's the kavod of Shabbos that makes the food good or the food just also enhances the Shabbat. So um, just hearing you say that makes me feel so good and knowing that my feeling about the food, which is so you know it's a gashmiistic thing, is is so is is in the right place. So thank you. <laughs> it's very it's, it's a very interesting dynamic. You're very welcome, and uh, thank you for adding that 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 point that yeah. that, that little curl. It does impact even exactly. on the very taste. Exactly. Uh, Shiber. Yes. Um, Mari. Uh, question: um, Is everything you said uh, apply equally to bo uh, uh, both of the Shabbos meals? Uh, it seems so. It seems so. You know, okay, I guess if you would have to choose, <clears throat> you know, maybe, you know, the, the, the week, the, the, the Shabbos day meal is considered the more Choshev day meal, uh, is considered the more Choshev meal, actually. But, um, but it's a close race between the two, between the Friday night one and the Shabbos day. But the Shabbos day, actually, like, for example, <clears throat> uh, 
if you have uh, chalot uh, and you're going to use one chala, you know, you can use obviously lechem mishnah, but you're going to have one chala of the lechem mishnah uh, for uh, for Friday night, and then you have another lechem mishnah for Shabbos day. So which one should be the larger one? So the larger chala should be put aside for the Shabbos day meal. Um, uh, as an example. But anyway, I think it applies to, uh, at least certainly for the Friday night and Shabbos meals, uh, Shabbos day meal, but uh, at the very least, the Shabbos day. Right. Shabbat, can I ask you a question? Maybe. Sure. About the status of Tzadash Lishit. Now, funny enough, since <clears> the uh, Corona starts driving very market on Tzadash Lishit, simply, I don't know, it gives me chizik for the week. Can you talk a second about the... the about Sudash shit and its role in Kabbalah Shabbos, because we spoke about usually used to be about Friday night and Shabbos lunch. Um, just maybe right. just <clears throat> the uh, the notion of uh, of Sudash Lishit having three meals. Uh, obviously, on one level, just the number three, which n- normally it's assumed that people have two meals on a regular day. Right. Uh, the very fact that Shabbos has an added meal. Uh, is added kavod for for Shabbos, um, mm-hmm. and uh, unfortunately, uh, Sudash Lishit sometimes gets a uh, gets short shrift uh, at best. You know, some people will you know just eat a mizonos, so they'll have a little uh, a little mizonos, so a nash, and that's enough. But it's not it's not really the way it should be. The uh, the the Shulchan Aruch goes through different levels of uh, of how you should fulfill. Uh, your 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 sudash lishit, and uh, he very much suggests having uh, lechem mishnah, or at least just some bread. And if not bread, then mizonos. And if you can't do that, then have uh, basar, you know, then have uh, basar or oaf. And if you can't have that, you know, fish, or and then and uh, and then have uh, vegetables, you know, fruit and vegetables. There's a whole pecking order, uh, and uh, but you definitely see that in that hierarchy one should be aspiring to having Lechem Mishnah uh, for each of the meals, Friday night, Shabbos day, and for Sudash Lishit, um, the proper thing. That's the right thing to do. We, in, in our home, we, uh, we have uh, three, uh, you know, three meals, Sudash Lishit, right. with Lechem Mishnah at each one. Um, and uh, the Aruch HaShulchan, uh, if, you, if you want to take a look at the Aruch HaShulchan on the sugya, so he, uh, he's highly critical of people um, you know, skipping out on this. He thinks it's terrible. Um, and uh, people should, uh, should understand that this is an important part of, uh, of, uh, of Shabbos. It's not, uh, it's not right. something to be over, overlooked. But, you know, granted, if, a, if somebody is full, you know, during, let's say, the, the winter months, uh, sometimes people are, are very full. And for the, eating for them a, a sudash lishit is uh, painful. If that's the case, if it's going to be an achila gasa, uh, if they're overstuffing themselves, then they can they can skip the meal, or at least have something light. They should try to have at least something light. And like the songs. But uh, but then the Mishnah Bura says, you know, someone who has chacham uh, enov barosho, you know, someone has eyes in his head, and they you know they should prepare properly. Don't don't stuff yourself at the Shabbos lunch if you know that you know, you're you're going to be stuffed for 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 sudash lishit. If you're not going to have room for sudash lishit, then eat less. At right. your at your Shabbos lunch meal, so that you can enjoy the uh, Sudash <laughs> Right, and the songs Ms. Mola David and Yidi Nefesh have the same status as Mirus. You're asking me what the what the status of Ms. Mola David is? And you did, yeah, the songs we sing it Shabbos Shabbos Shudas. I've always wondered if they have the same status as the Zemiris, because usually the Zemiris have more. We give them a higher status than. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're asking the question that's being raised. If I understand, is the the um, the role of zmirot at the Shabbos meal? With, um, yeah, in comparison, to uh, obviously, on on one level, and Shabbos Shudas, but yeah, and and by extension, what what role does it play at Shabbos Shudas? Right. Um, you know, on on some level, if we can even step back for a moment and think about what Kiddush does. Uh, there are there are poskim that understand that kiddush recited prior to the Shabbos meal makes it a Shabbos meal. That's part of the devotion and the dedication of the meal uh, to Shabbos and making it unique. Uh, that we have this very special kiddush prior to it. 
Um, to the point that, as just an example, uh, Rav Moshe Feinstein's Atzal uh, felt that uh, if you had Kiddush in shul, you're, you're still obligated, you know, for, and you had, let's say you had wine and you had um, herring and uh, mizonos. Um, when you go home, he felt that you should have, you should make Kiddush again. Because he felt that the idea, the notion of Kiddush B'makam Suda was to make the Suda. Not, it's not to serve the Kiddush as much as it's to make the Suda a Suda of Shabbos. So uh, that's one level. Rabbi Soloveitchik would say that the Kiddush, uh, which we use to help enhance the Shabbos meal, uh, is, uh, he, said, he would say that uh, Zmirot is a form of Kiddush. Because according to Rabbi Salavechik, when we say Kiddush, we fulfill the, the mitzvah in Torah of Zohar at Yom HaShabbat L'Kadshel. Remember the Shabbos to sanctify it. That's what we fulfill when we say Kiddush. That's what the Gemara in, uh, in Dav Kavav in Psachim says. Kafei and Kavav. But Rabbi Salavechik says you can continue to fulfill that mitzvah by singing Zmiros. Zero, Zmiros is an a- added kiyom of Zohar at Yom HaShabbat L'Kadshel. Um, if you will, for, for Suda Shlishit, uh, so you would have that, but you also have Ms. Mola David Hashem Ro'ilo Echsar, that uh, this is showing our, our very clear relationship with Hashem, that Hashem, you know, you know is our shepherd, uh, and we lack for nothing. It's, it's a very, it's a devakos moment. It's a real deep connection between B'nai Yisrael and Hashem as Shabbos ebbs away. If I, could, uh, if I could just mention something here, I, I don't know whether you did this intentionally, but um, it, I, it, it's, it's just, it's sort of given me an opportunity to share a, a, a thought from Rav Luchenstein Zatzal. Um, a number of years ago, Rav Luchenstein, I mean, he said this other times, but I remember it from, uh, from a Shabbaton in the young Israel of Woodmere, a number of years ago, where he, he said, Mizmor uh, David Hashem Roi Lo Echsar, Hashem is our shepherd, we shall not want. Uh, Hashem is my shepherd, I shall not want. So what, what is the relationship between Hashem being our shepherd and us not wa- being wanting anything? So Rav Luchensin said there are two, pshat, two possible pshatim. He said one pshat, which is the, the more posh pshat, is that because Hashem is our shepherd, so he's so good at it, he will always provide for us uh, on, uh, during, you know, during our lives. He will make sure that we will have everything that we, that we need. And therefore, lo echsar, I will want for nothing because I have the greatest shepherd. But, said Rav Luchenstein, there is another interpretation and he favored that interpretation. Uh, he said that he thinks that what the deeper meaning is that because Hashem is my shepherd, I, I don't want for anything else. You know, it's all I want in life is Hashem to be my shepherd. The fact that he's my shepherd, then I, then I don't need anything else. I want for nothing because Hashem is my shepherd. I'm fine. Now I'm satisfied. Uh, I have everything that I want because Hashem is my shepherd. And again, this uh, really underscores uh, you know, Hashem's uh, you, know, you, know, uh, you know, Hashem's relationship with us, that we're so close. Uh, and moreover, it underscores Rav Luchenstein's um, approach to, uh, you know, to his Avodah Hashem and his relationship to Hashem, that just being connected with Hashem, having a relationship with Hashem, was all he wanted. And that was enough. And he wanted for nothing else. Um, I, if I can share, just if I may, one more story. Uh, I, I remember seeing this with my own eyes, how uh, one uh, lunchtime in the yeshiva during the week, uh, there used to be a, a special table for the Rashi yeshiva and uh, a separate table for the ramen, for the rebbeim. So the ramen, all the ramen were eating at their table and all the tamidim were eating at their tables. And Rav Luchinson came in after giving it a, a very long shear Sheer, you know, lunchtime begins at one. He finished sheer at one fifteen, and he walked into the cheder uh, ochel. He went, walked into the lunchroom, 
and uh, he sat down at the Rosh Yeshiva table to eat his lunch. But for some reason, uh, at the table, there were only beets. At all the other tables, there was, uh, there was chicken and there was rice, uh, salads, and, uh, and an assortment of other good foods. And at, 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 this was during the weekday. And Rav Luchensin just had beets at the, uh, at the table. There was a serving platter of beets. So Rav Luchenstein looked like, okay, you know, he shrugged his shoulders and he began piling on the beets onto his plate. He's the Rosh Yeshiva. He could have, you know, asked someone to bring him some chicken, some rice. But if, the, if all he was being given was beets, it's fine. So I, uh, I got up, I jumped up and I ran to the, uh, to the kitchen in Yeshiva and I said, listen, if you don't bring out a chicken and rice for, for Rav Luchenstein and all the other foods, the, he, he's only going to eat beets, and that's it. And they, uh, they hopped to it very quickly, and they brought him other food. But really, Rav Luchenstein would have eaten just beets uh, had, uh, had they not brought it. He was just piling it on. And that's just an example of Loach uh, He He really he felt he wanted for nothing. All he needed is was his relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and as long as he had the basics, the minimum, uh, he was fine. He really was fine. Anyway, it was uh, really a joy and a, uh, and a pleasure to learn with all of you and, uh, and to spend time with you. And I wish you all well, and good uh, Chodesh, Chodesh Tov, Shabbat Shalom, and Besarot uh, to, to all of us. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.